if you ever need a helper. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in for another quick channel CGE video. Today, I am more than honored to be here to make this video of the turbocharged versus non-turbocharged PT Cruisers. I'm here with my own personal 2004 PT Cruiser GT, which has the turbocharged 2.4 liter and a four-speed automatic. Same basic drive line that's in the Neon SRT4. And then over here on my right, I have a 2007 Touring Edition PT Cruiser with the naturally aspirated 2.4 liter that was found in the vast majority of PT Cruisers made over the years. Something I've often been curious of, not just with PT Cruisers, but in cars in general, is the turbo versus the non-turbo. How do they stack up against each other and how big of a difference does having that turbo make? Basically the same motor, this one is built a little better and it has you know supporting modifications for the turbocharger but I've often been curious of the difference in the way they feel and all around. Specifically in PT Cruisers since I own a turbocharged PT Cruiser myself. So today I'm going to give you guys my quick comparison of the turbo versus naturally aspirated. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright ladies and gentlemen, well here we are doing this comparison, we're starting out in the non-turbo Touring Edition 2007 PT Cruiser. Basically what I'm going to do is give you guys a few thoughts and then when I get to our closed course, um, I'm going to do a basic acceleration run, see what kind of numbers we get just on a, on a small closed course and then I will do the same in the other car and of course I'm going to like the turbo better. I mean I own the car personally and I like the power better. but just really seeing the big difference in between the two same basic motor just turbocharged and built a little bit so I've often been curious to do this also this car has air conditioning so that's nice my car has air conditioning too but it doesn't work so in the general sense of the word this car is very smooth and I honestly feel like this is the more comfortable one to be driving if you want, I did a review of both these cars at different times. When I say review, basically just giving my thoughts on the car in a video. And I'll put a link to them both down in the description if you want to hear more in depth on them. But really, I feel like this car is a more smooth to drive. But then again, it's not really a fair comparison to make because this car is newer by five, six, three years. And stuff changed, the front end changed a little bit. Of course, the interior changed, the steering wheel's different, the configuration's different. So it's not, it's, it's kind of an unfair comparison to make of between the two cars, unless we're talking about the motor because the motor was the same throughout the duration of the vehicle. Okay, so now we are getting into our closed area. We do a quick acceleration test. All right, here we go. AC's off. Right. We did a, basically an eighth mile run back there. Um, let's see what kind of numbers we have. We have the eighth mile, 10 seconds at 63 miles per hour. So it's safe, 10.5 seconds at 63 miles per hour. I think it's safe to say that zero to 60 is approximately 10 seconds, which is, I'm not sure we're gonna find out about the other car, but I'm thinking it's substantially less. All right, leaving our closed course now. But honestly, even though it seems like a slow time, it doesn't feel terrible. And I wouldn't want a car to be any slower than that. I uh, mean, personally, I wouldn't own a, this car. But at cars in general, I feel like 10 seconds, zero to 60 is, I don't need any more than this is basically what I'm trying to say. But it's not for me. <laughs> I really do like this car. I've been able to drive it quite a bit in the past because I know the owner very well. And I really like the car, especially on the expressway. It feels very good, like on the highway. You set cruise control and you just go. It's very comfortable and you don't have to worry about your power then. And when you go up a hill, you have cruise control set, it will downshift, it'll wind up if it needs to, but you don't have to worry about it. And you don't need the power really then either. And it works out just fine. It's a cruiser. It's a PT cruiser. Personal transport cruiser. 
that's what this is. And it really, I really feel like that's a perfect name for it because that's what it feels like as I drive it down the road. Now, back to our original subject of the power difference. We're almost back to our headquarters. We're going to get in the turbocharged PT Cruiser and see what kind of a difference we make, not only in numbers on our closed course, but also in the fields. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to be behind the wheel of the turbocharged PT Cruiser. It's really, really hot in here. It's a black car, black leather interior, and no air conditioning. So you gotta be chill, you know, and put on your shades and block out the haters. Oh, but it sounds good though, I love it. Love the sound of this motor, especially when it, a cold start up has a really, really nice tone. It's nice and deep. So this is a really great motor, the SRT4 turbo motor. I love it. I love it a lot. I mean, I own one, so of course I do. But anyway, starting out in the GT PT Cruiser, the turbocharged version, right away it feels like a different car, partly because the interior is so much different. The basic feel of the interior is completely different. The wheel feels different in the hand. It feels like a different car. It really does. It rides smooth still, but it also rides differently. So it still feels good, but it's just, it's different than the other one. And it's more sporty. It's a more sporty model. What more can you say? Also, if the other one was the same year as this, I'm sure it would be different. So it's kind of not a completely fair comparison to make between these two cars in some ways. All right, now we are on our closed course. So let me get our um, computer, our race computer set up here. All right, are we ready? Let's do this. second quicker in the half of a mile our speed was 73 versus 63 so we gained 10 miles per hour and a half of a second as far as eighth of a mile took to get there we didn't really gain a lot but I'm surprised at the just the gain in power all across the band specifically higher end though but even even the lower end power there's a there's a huge gain in lower end power because of the build srt4 motor this feels cool when you're driving it you feel cool when you drive it it sounds good partly because of the muffler delete even before the muffler delete though it had a nice tone to it it sounded good it makes true true noises turbo you hear it spool you hear it blow off it's more fun to drive with the turbo the GT model in general is more fun to drive. It's tuned differently. It has a slightly stiffer suspension, which is probably where we see the biggest difference in ride quality. It's also uh, just a little bit lower by like a half an inch to an inch. In the general sense of the word, this car is more fun to drive. Whereas the other one really lives up to the name Cruiser. It's a Cruiser. But anyways, let's go into the CG headquarters where there's air conditioning. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at the numbers and conclude this video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the CGE headquarters. It's a little cooler in here, so I decided to wrap up the video here as we take a quick look at the numbers. On our closed course in Mexico, eighth mile in 10.07 seconds approximately in the GT at 73 miles per hour. We did not do 60 in sub seven seconds. I think the car is perfectly capable of sub seven seconds. One thing, we do have some altitude here. We're not at sea level, so that's one thing to consider. It's also like 85 degrees and very humid. That's another thing to consider. I think that in ideal conditions, this in particular car could do something like a seven second zero to 60 time. I'm thinking at this point that the naturally aspirated is capable of something like nine seconds. The naturally aspirated did the eighth mile in about 10 and a half seconds. So as far as by the end, there wasn't a big difference, but by, by half a second approximately, 
I didn't have as good of a launch in the turbo, by the way. Um, you couldn't really tell that in the video, but I didn't quite have as good of a launch. Um, but anyways, that's water under the bridge now. Eighth mile in 10.534, so about 10 and a half seconds. It's 63 miles per hour, so it's safe to say we did zero to 60 in around, I would say 10.2 today. We're probably capable of a mid nine, maybe early nines. Also, the 60 foot, which is the short one in 2.1 seconds at 16. I forgot to read that for the turbo, which was 3.2 seconds. So we were actually slower in the 60 foot by that much. And I think that was primarily because of my poor launch. Um, so that, that's also something to consider. Basically, after number crunching, the turbo is a couple seconds faster all across the board. And as far as speed goes, it's a little bit faster, maybe 10 miles per hour. But as far as actual speed goes, which you would think you would gain a lot of in the high end, like I was saying earlier, it doesn't gain a whole lot, although it does. It gains a surprising amount in the lower end. So really overall, you're getting a big power boost with the GT with the turbo. The turbo does that much. But anyways, there we have it approximately. My general conclusion of the turbo versus non-turbo would be that the turbo is really a lot more fun to drive. It is definitely faster. You can definitely feel it. It does not have to wind up as barely as much as you would think, especially compared to the non-turbo. Now, do you need it? No, you do not need it. Of course you don't. But me personally, and if you like any kind of extra power, I would recommend looking around for a GT. The PT Cruisers, in the general sense, are all less than $5,000 at this point. I personally wouldn't drive another one but a GT, but all around, it's a nice car to drive. The GT, there is a big difference. Don't let anybody fool you. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you had as much fun as I did trying to figure out exactly how much faster the GT was compared to the NA. It was a lot of fun to make this video. Let me know if you like it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or anything you just want to say. Give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy. That's always helpful. And again, guys, thanks for watching. You rock. God bless. And have a good one.